What's that weird thing on your tree's leaves? Midsummer is a time when I get lots of calls about galls, abnormal growths on trees. While lots of different things can cause galls, most of the ones that we see in our area are caused by insects that have found a clever way to turn these leaves into their food and their house. In this edition of What's Bugging My Tree, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of those summertime tree galls, um, some of the most common ones you might see and the insects that cause them. Galls are a general term for irregular plant growths. This can come in lots of different shapes, sizes, and places, from barely noticeable to weird tumor-like swellings. Galls can occur anywhere on the plant, from leaves to bark to flowers to roots. Different things can trigger the formation of galls in plants. Some are caused by pathogens like fungi and bacteria. Some are part of the plant's natural wound response to some kind of damage. But the most common cause of galls on our shade trees are insects and mites. Insect galls are frequently caused by the development of a wasp or fly larvae inside the plant. Um, with the insect emitting different growth regulating chemicals that cause the plant to produce this abnormal growth. The insect gains nutrients from the inner gall tissue and also protects itself against natural enemies and, much to the disappointment of gardeners, insecticide sprays that make the galls really difficult to control. Here you can see the ash flower gall. It's caused by small mites that distort those male flowers of the ash trees. The galls are initially green and then they'll dry and they'll turn a brown color. Unlike the healthy flowers that you might see, these are gonna stay on the tree through the winter. And you might wonder, huh, what are those you know, brown balls up in my ash tree? Those are the ash flower galls. Another really common gall that I see all the time and love to play with, especially with kids, is the hackberry nipple gall. Um, these are small aphid-like insects called psyllids that have sucking mouth parts. If you carefully cut them open, you may even see a tiny developing psyllid inside. The adults look just like tiny cicadas, and they can be a nuisance when the cold weather comes and they try to find shelter indoors, sometimes in large numbers but they're harmless to both people and hackberry trees, which aren't hurt by these galls, although they can be prolific in number. They're really easy to find um, on the underside of hackberry leaves, but if you look at them, you'll notice that the upper surface of those leaves is still green, they're still photosynthesizing, and it doesn't really hurt the tree too much. Even poison ivy is not immune from getting galls. Here you can see some with um, galls that are produced by tiny little mites warty growths on the upper surface that are quite common in our area. These really noteworthy galls are called elm sac galls and they're caused by an aphid and have this deep red color. If you open them inside the right time of year you're gonna find them filled with tiny little aphids. Despite their appearance they don't really hurt the tree. Oak trees in general are host to so many different insects, and this applies when it comes to galls, with hundreds of different gall-causing insects on oak trees. Oak apple galls, which are large, spongy growths um, that then turn papery when they get old. Jumping oak galls, which are tiny little galls that you see on the underside of leaves that are caused by tiny little wasps. And they're really easy to miss, although you might notice the leaves turning a little brown on the upper surface. If you flip it over, um, those tiny little dots will each have one tiny little gall. Maple spindle galls are another common gall this time of year with these kind of um, really eye-catching spiky spindles on the upper surface of maple leaves, particularly sugar maple. You might also see what are called maple bladder galls, which on silver and red maple tend to be more warty galls that occur on the upper surface and those are caused by mites. You might even see the maple eye spot gall, which as its name implies, kind of looks like an eye. Um, particularly on red maples, you'll see these occasionally. Um, and they're caused by a small fly. Um, it's a leaf miner that is gonna have a little larvae right in the center of that eye. So if you peel it back, you might find it. 
While galls might look bad, they don't really damage trees and mostly aren't worth your time from a management perspective. This is really true of those leaf galls that we just talked about that might look really eye-catching and striking, um, but they don't really hurt those trees. Those trees can still photosynthesize through the summer just fine. Um, but if you really don't like them, there are some insecticide options out there on your landscape trees. Um, however, I would say that the timing is really tricky on those because by the time you notice that damage, um, that gall has already been in your tree for a while, been maturing, and is going to be really hard to control until the following spring. And then that timing is really key because you're thinking of the timing that happens um, maybe at bud break when those insect uh, females are laying those eggs. The most damaging galls are those that impact the the twigs and the formation of new growth and tissue. Things like horned oak gall or gouty oak gall. Um, most of the time though, even these aren't a problem if you just have a gall here or there. But if you have stressed landscape trees or maybe a low diversity of trees um, in an area that these galls can just sweep through, you might see a lot more. If you can catch those early, you can prune them out. Otherwise management can be really difficult because insecticides are typically not very effective. Thanks for joining me today in this tree tidbit and learning a little bit more about the diversity of summer galls. If you liked what you learned today, make sure to check us out online and follow us on social media.